Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I have a bunch of HIS video cards right here next to me. If you've watched any of our videos on any of these HIS video cards, you've probably heard me or Joanne reference the iTurbo overclocking software. So today's video is actually going to be a little bit more about GPU overclocking in general, specifically with regards to the HIS series of cards, the IceQ and the IceQ X2 cooling systems that they've designed, as well as a walkthrough and demonstration of the iTurbo overclocking software. So let's start out by going over several of the cards that are uh, compatible with the software, of course, as well as a little bit of talking about uh, video card overclocking in general. Now when you're overclocking a video card, there's generally speaking two settings that you will be overclocking. One is going to be the GPU frequency and the GPU is right on the other side of the PCB right there. Uh, the other one is going to be the memory frequency and the memory you also can't see right now, however it's on the other side of the PCB right here. Now when you're talking about video cards, generally speaking, you will have what is known as a reference design video card and this is actually the reference design 7970 from AMD. And you'll notice a few things. This is a the approved design from AMD. It has a blower style fan. It ejects air out the back of the case and that is a benefit. Uh, however, I, generally speaking, you will find that the aftermarket cooling designs that manufacturers come out with will perform better than the uh, reference design from, from the actual GPU manufacturer. And that simply goes hand in hand with, well, why would they come out with an aftermarket cooler if it didn't perform better? Well, that, there you go. But uh, when you move up to an aftermarket cooler, such as the IceQX2 here, which H HIS has designed, you're going to get the benefit of, uh, well, you're going to have an open air design here. You have some heat pipes that are more actively transferring the heat from the GPU out into these big aluminum fin arrays. You have two fans instead of one. The fans are directly providing uh, airflow over all of those fins, uh, helping to dissipate the heat. And uh, some of it would eject out this side. Some of it would eject out that side. And then again, just uh, keeping the components cooler is what is going to allow you to overclock more. And the benefit of overclocking, of course, is that you can get added performance from the card that you would, uh, you would not normally get if you were going with the uh, stock speeds or the reference design cooler. So this one, uh, speaking of which, is the Radeon HD 7970. So this is uh, actually the same exact GPU that's in uh, the reference design I showed you over there and it will be running at the reference 7970 speeds out of the box. We also have the 7970 gigahertz edition. So this is the uh, Tahiti XT2 GPU as opposed to the Tahiti XT that's in the uh, standard 7970. And again, uh, by way of the uh, IceQ X2 cooler that's on these cards as well as uh, some of the components that HIS has chosen to integrate into the uh, cards themselves, whether you're talking about the actual memory itself or the power delivery components that are providing power to the memory as well as the GPU. Uh, higher quality components that you can keep cooler are going to allow for additional overclocks. Now that was a look at the IceQ X2 cooler. Uh, we also have another uh, cooler in that same family. This is the IceQ cooler, not the X2 version. So if you guys remember any of these videos, this one has the black hole impeller design. So we have a single fan down at this end that's going to spin. They've uh, kind of situated it so it sits up off the card so it can actually pull in air from both sides. And again, uh, this is another card that I have benchmarked and I can confirm uh, very good performance from this uh, aftermarket cooling design from HIS. Uh, and this one also maintains that feature of primarily ejecting the hot air uh, out this side of the case and that does come at the expense of this being a triple slot design or at least so I, I would call it something like a two and a half slot design as opposed to the two, the two slot design of the uh, IceQ X2. So you do need a little bit more space but again uh, a very effective cooler. So now that we've taken a look at a few of the cards at least that are compatible with this, uh, there's actually one more on my list here that's the 7870 gigahertz edition. This is just the box and uh, the actual cards on my test bed right now. So as you can see, my test bed is all set up right here. I just kind of built a computer on the table really quick just for this video. Uh, as you can see, my HIS Radeon HD 7870 IceQ Edition video card is currently installed. So I'm just going to be running through a quick demo of the software here to show you guys how it works. Now I have GPU-Z running so you guys can take a look at the uh, sort of stock info for this video card. <clears throat> I have the iTurbo software already installed. As you can see, once you run it, uh, it just pops up and you have uh, sort of a simple little interface right here. So it's kind of like a widget design and then by pressing the different buttons you can access certain things. 
quieter, cooler, and the iTurbo button are all presets. So, so by clicking the iTurbo button, you'll get an automatic uh, overclock. It's, it's really just a marginal overclock, actually, as you can see reflected down here. It's increased the GPU clock by about 11 megahertz and the memory clock by about 12 megahertz. So pretty conservative there on the automatic button, but you easily click that to turn it on and off. And this is really a setting that you can uh, change yourself and then uh, you, can, you can set that. So by pushing that button at any time, you can do that. You can also set up profiles for quieter and cooler and save those using the software. But let's jump into it. First off, the I button here at the uh, top of the circle will kind of expand it. You can see that circle still down here at the bottom. And uh, here is the info panel. So you can see information about the card, such as uh, it's, it's a Radeon HD 7800 series. The GPU is a Pitcairn ATI. I should say AMD, but uh, they're still going with ATI and the VBIOS. Uh, it's also die size, interface, uh, memory size, bus width, and then down here at the bottom you can see the actual clocks. So the GPU clock of 1100 megahertz and the memory clock of 1200 megahertz. You also notice here that you can save a report. You can also save this VBIOS uh, if you want to. Um, also at the top here are kind of your navigation buttons. So let me click the I again to go back to the little mode, and then you can click advanced to go back to the big mode. So those are just kind of shortcuts. One will jump you to the uh, info, one will jump you to the overclock. You also have home right here, which isn't going to show me anything because I'm not connected to the internet right now. But this will display you a web page with, with some information from HIS and some news. Uh, there's the inf info panel again. Here's the overclock uh, area, and this is kind of where you'll do most of your tweaking. You can click right here and manually punch in a number. You also have a handy reset button, so anytime you're not sure if you want to jump back to what you were before, just click reset. You can also use a slider to increase the frequency if you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and bump up to, oh, let's say 1200. See, if it goes up to like 1206, you can just type that in directly. 1200 megahertz, and we'll do just, uh, let's say, 1250 on the memory, just because just we're not really doing too much right now. We're just seeing what we can do. Uh, you also have a power limit for the board, which you can increase here, and this will give you some extra overclocking headroom. And then also you have voltage control, which is a unique feature of uh, this one, and also uh, a, a nice feature that's unlocked for the AMD cards is the actual control of the voltage. Usually if I'm going to be do doing overclocking, I see how far I can get without doing voltage, and then when I do do voltage increases, I go very, very small increments, a tiny bit at a time. Voltage is the one thing that's a little bit more dangerous when you are doing overclocking, so be very, just, just be on the safe side when you're dealing with voltage. Again, go in small increments, uh, test in between to make sure that your card is stable before you go for any additional voltage or an additional overclock. By clicking apply, it will automatically apply those settings. And uh, in just a moment over here in uh, GPU-Z, you should see that reflected. So again, you can see the default clock here, 1100, default memory, 1200, and now I'm up to 1200 on the GPU clock and 1250 on the memory clock. Now, if I was going beyond this, I, again, uh, the best way to go about it is to just move slowly upward in small increments, uh, run a uh, system test, um, something like the Unigen Heaven benchmark is a great stability test to run while you're overclocking. Uh, see if you're stable doing that, and then if you're within uh, temperature as well as uh, uh, you're maintaining stability, and the temperature, again, is displayed right there in the, down there in the lower right, then you can go for something beyond that. The next tab up here is the fan control. Uh, so here you can do automatic, which I have it set to now. You can also do fixed if you just want the fan to always run at a fixed speed. And as you can see, as I click that, well, maybe you can't see. Who knows if you can hear? It depends on how close my mic actually is. But the fan just got a little bit, uh, started spinning a little bit faster. And then you also have a fan curve that you can set up here uh, incrementally. So as you can see, it's set very basically right now. But by clicking anywhere, anywhere here, you can add an additional point, And you can basically say, when the fan reaches this temperature, I want it to spin at this percentage of RPMs. And you can sort of set that all along the way. So you could say maybe, you know, up to 60 degrees, I want to keep the fan curve pretty, uh, pretty uh, conservative. And then, you know, once I get past 70, I really want to ramp it up and make sure that it's, uh, you know, that it cools off the card very quickly. So again, that's a custom fan curve you can set. Here's where you can also save your fan curves to that quieter or cooler uh, uh, buttons, which you can also see down here. And that way you can easily access them just by clicking the little button in the future. Uh, we'll save this as cooler. All right, now that's saved as cooler, and by clicking that, it will automatically set up that uh, fan curve. And then lastly, you have some settings here. So these are just some default settings uh, for the application, such as you can have it automatically load 
on Windows Startup and you can have it start minimized. You can have it load on Windows Startup and restore your clock. So if you've set in a uh, overclock and you want to stick with it, choose that option and uh, then automatically the software will load when your system loads and it will restore your overclock settings. Synchronized cards and multi-GPU configuration is very handy. You'll notice if you are using this with a Crossfire X setup, for example, you'll have additional options here in the drop-down menu. You'll be able to choose any of your cards, and you can adjust those settings individually, but I find it to be much easier, and you'll definitely get better stability by choosing the Synchronize Cards button. That way, uh, you just set up your settings for one cards, and it will automatically translate those settings over to other cards. You can also show effective memory clocks uh, rather than the actual memory clocks, and that will basically multiply the actual memory clocks by four. You can also disable the 2D clocks, set the clock on change. You can also save your fan settings with the clock profile, and you can also disable ULPS, that's ultra low power state. And if you guys are familiar with AMD's newer cards, uh, they actually have what's called zero core, which puts them into standby or zero power mode uh, when they are not being in use. You can simply disable that if it helps you maintain some system stability. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the HIS iTurbo Video Card Overclocking Software Demonstration. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you all next time on Newegg TV.